Hi, this is Cheryl from Naughty's Art, and we're in my downstairs casting studio right now. Or, really what it is is a uh, storage room downstairs that I have converted into my casting area while it's still too cold to work in the garage. And if you can tell from my voice, um, I'm still recovering from being sick. It, it, it's been a really long road getting healthy again. Um, don't ever get whooping cough. It is probably one of the worst things I've ever gone through. Um, it's, you know, three months of mucus and coughing and coughing so hard you see stars and you can't feel like you can't catch your breath. And your voice sounds like this even four months later. So it's a good thing I don't do a whole lot of singing anymore. But what we're going to be doing tonight is casting up a cold cast bronze Lady Vinsmith. So I'm going to talk a little bit right now about what we're going to do and then reposition the camera, stick it into time lapse because this also takes quite a while. And then I'll probably do some voiceover. So first off, I'll just do a quick rundown of what we're going to do and the materials I use. So first thing is it's cold cast bronze, so you need bronze. And what I use is, oh god, this is heavy. This is produced by Smooth On. There's other companies. I use mostly Smooth On products. You know, not sponsored or anything. I just like their stuff. But they make a great bronze powder. It's really finely milled. And that gets mixed into the resin. And it also gets powdered onto the inside of the mold. Let me bring up part of the mold. There's the back half of the Lady Smith mold. And um, the first thing I'll be doing is powdering the inside of the mold. This will partly give a nicer finish, but it'll also make sure that the resin kind of gets uh, sucked into the little detail area so we don't get bubbling. Because this bronze powder is really, really expensive, and I do not want to wreck any of the bronze castings. So, that's how we start off. This is a Rigid Mother Mold, which is... I can't remember the name of the product. It comes in the Smooth On's Brush On uh, kit. Uh, but the silicone is Rebound 25. It's great to brush on. So, we'll go through, brush that on. The whole mold gets put together, the two halves, and then it'll get bolted together with uh, machine bolts. And then we will mix up the resin. Now, the resin I'm using for this is. Uh, again, smooth on smooth cast 326. It is a slower setting. Uh, it's actually meant for color matching. It's actually meant for tinting and stuff like uh, cold cast bronze. So what we'll do is mix up uh, three ounces of this. That's all we'll need for the um, detail coat for Lady Vinsmith, and then I'll get back filled with solid resin that doesn't have bronze in it. So we've got three ounces of this a half ounce uh, by volume, um, not by weight, because the bronze, a half ounce by volume of bronze is a lot heavier than half ounce by weight. But a half ounce by volume of bronze get mixed into that along with a couple of drops, along with a drop of this stuff, which you probably can't see the label because I spilled it everywhere. But it is the Smooth On's um, So Strong Tint in black, and it'll tint the resin just a little bit and then I will pour it into the mold, spin the mold for a really long time by hand. <laughs> this is not the, the uh, quickest process. Then um, once that sets up enough we will flip the mold upside down into this little old plastic pitcher that I use for uh, supporting the mold while it's uh, setting. And backfill it again with the Smooth Cast 326 that's been tinted black. Kind of look like that. And then that sets for at least an hour. I usually let it go a little bit longer than that just to make sure it's completely cooled down because this resin gets really, really hot as it's setting. Um, hot enough that, you know, if I touched it while I was still setting up, I could pot potentially burn myself. It's an exothermic chemical reaction. So, all that said, um, I'm going to kind of go into time lapse mode now and uh, see you when the video is done. 
So here I'm just using a fluffy paintbrush to coat the inside of the mold with the uh, bronze powder. And this is a really quick process. Um, it's one that I probably should wear a dust mask for, but I'm not because uh, it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Then once this is all powdered up, it'll get assembled with screws. Uh, and this takes, you know, a little, doesn't take too long. Um, it did take a little bit longer because I started out wearing gloves to do this. Um, and then I gave up and took the gloves off so I get a little bit more uh, finesse with my fingers in there. These are machine bolts. Um, I had originally was using or tried to use bungee, little bungee cords and that was a terrible idea. It did not hold the mold together tight enough so I drilled in holes and bolted it together and both the Lady Vinsmith molds are bolted. Um, and this is definitely going to be my go-to for molds because it works really well. Though it does take a little bit longer, um, I don't have an electric screwdriver or this will go much faster. Okay, so the mold is all powdered and screwed together, and yes, I probably should have been do it wearing a mask when I powdered this, um, but I was being pretty careful, so I didn't kick up a whole lot of bronze dust just to breathe in. Mm. So, next up I did a couple of other things where I actually start uh, pouring the resin. Um, because I use big gallon jugs of resin, um, that needs to be poured into itty bitty cups like this. Um, I actually do just an immediate step, and I have two labeled 16-ounce uh, cups here, and those get filled uh, with the resin, just so to make pouring out into the little cups, uh, the little measuring cups, easier. Um, the other thing I do is, obviously, the measuring cups I label. I also go in and mark off the measuring because for some reason I cannot figure out, this manufacturer puts the graduations on the inside of the dose cups, which means that once you pour resin in, you kind of can't see them. So I just go in with Sharpie and I keep a Sharpie in my apron. I'll mark them off. So next thing up I'll need to do is I will um, measure out the bronze I need. I will pour resin into those cups, um, put on some thing to listen to while I'm doing this because this takes a while, and the respirator. And then I'll be back to start recording. Okay, so in super fast mode, here's me mixing up the resin. This is three ounces total, um, an ounce and a half each of parts A and B of the Smoothcast 326, plus the drop of uh, So Strong Pigment and the half ounce of by volume of bronze powder. And you can see this takes a lot of mixing. That bronze powder is so heavy that it um, wants to settle at the bottom. So, you know, you really have to mix it up well get in the mold and keep the mold moving uh, when it's something like this because not only do you want to get an even coating on the inside of the mold, you also want to keep that bronze from settling into one spot, which it will do if you just kind of leave it to its own devices. The reason for me rotational casting it like this is um, largely to cut down the amount of bronze putter um, use that bronze powder is incredibly expensive. It's over $100 for the five pound tub there. So I don't want to use too much of it in each casting um, for cost reasons. Plus there's just no reason to have it solid uh, cold cast bronze all the way through because you're just not going to be able to see it. So I want that outer quarter of an inch roughly um, in the bronze and then backfill it with the black resin. This is a pretty long process. You'll see some jumps here and there where I just cut out pieces where I'm just rotating and rotating for time because otherwise this video would be incredibly long. Even with the uh, video set at five times normal speed, which it is right now, this just, I mean, it takes forever. So, um, so it's not too boring. I'm, uh, 
jumping around a bit. Uh, with the resin in the mold for this, it ends up weighing about 5 pounds, so um, 40 minutes of rotating this is just um, murder on my back and shoulders, which is why really I can only do two or three at the most castings in a day. Uh, other Anything more is more than my muscles can uh, handle. Now, the thin uh, layer of this detail coat is one of the reasons why rotational casting it like this takes so long. Um, this is a slower setting resin, but also the thickness of resin um, determines how long it takes to set. If this was solid all the way through, it would take 15 minutes to be solid, though not ready to demold. It would still be too hot and um, flexible but it would not be sloshing around anymore. Whereas this thin uh, quarter inch coat, it takes 40 minutes for it to completely solidify. Every so often you're going to see me checking it with a flashlight and what I'm doing there is checking to see if there's um, a film forming in the narrow parts. If there is, that will block when I backfill it with uh, the solid resin. So I want to make sure that's not happening, and if it is, to get a bamboo skewer down in there and sort of pop that film. Otherwise, um, it's going to be too hard to do it once it's solid, and it's going to ruin the casting. That has happened a couple times with the white resin castings. Thankfully, not with the bronzes so far. That actually is the first time I have um, actually timed how long rotational casting mistakes. <laughs> Apparently, um, I kind of get in the groove and think it takes a lot less time than it does because that took 40 minutes and it's still just a little bit liquid in there. Um, um, probably gonna give it a few more turns. Um, see, wait for when the uh, resin stops flowing a little bit. Then it'll get flipped up inside this up here on the uh, table because that way I can get it level and I do actually have a little level here and um, I'll pour the black resin in and I think this video is going to be pretty long so I'm going to skip that because it's the same thing I did earlier um, the two parts mix them together toss in the resin tint the only difference is not putting in any bronze so um, I'm going to stop this video shortly, do that, um, wait the uh, hour or so before it cures. I'm probably going to go off and uh, cast up one of the white resin ones while I'm waiting. And then I'll come back and do a little video at the end um, and showing you it as I pull it out of the mold. And I'm also going to go open the window because it's kind of bad in here. Okay, so we're back. I'm going to demold the Lady Vinsmith bronze that we just did, just for time reasons. I already took the bolts out, I just haven't opened it up, so make my knee up here so you can very carefully take the mother mold off. What I usually do is run my finger up along the seam here. Down. Start with the back. Just carefully peel. And I'll just kind of come like this off. There's half. So you can see all the detail on the back. Same thing, just carefully peeling away. I always want to be careful in the front because I don't want to tear the mold. There's a, see this sort of inset area right here? The mold kind of likes to get stuck a little bit right there. And that's just, I really don't want to tear the mold. I want to be really careful right there. Oh, I need is one of my wind tools mixed just slightly too much resin so it kind of overflowed. So what I want to do is just get this wooden tool 
carefully up underneath the resin and silicone because I don't want the mold to tear around the bottom edge. So you just it's just a wooden sculpting tool. That's not sharp at all. It's just got a nice narrow edge. There we go. Yeah, you can see where this sort of rim of resin right here, which I will trim off, kind of uh, cause it to get stuck right there. And I wanted to just carefully get it out so it wouldn't tear. So we have the mold. And there is the bronze lady of Smith. You can see it's not a whole lot of flashing except for the bottom where you kind of have the overrun. And that's really easy. I'll just take this box color cutter real quick. Just trim that off. Now when I go to finish this, it will get cleaned up even better with sandpaper and everything. Because I don't know if you can see in the camera the bottom get kind of um kind of bubbly. Or not so much bubbly, sort of um wrinkly. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's got to do with the temperature in the room. That one's a little bit colder. Sometimes the bottoms get a little weird, and since I had the window open, it's a little colder in here than usual. Because it is um, beginning of May in Maine, so it's only like 45 degrees or something out, out right now because it's about midnight. So uh, yeah, that's the whole process for doing one of the cold cast bronzes. So start to finish, it's like three hours, give or take a little bit. What I will do when I go to put this back in is take a couple minutes, clean out all the little bits of bronze and resin in here, stick it back in the mother mold. It'll get sprayed with mold release and it needs to sit for about 15 minutes um, before I can powder it. The uh, silicone is still really warm. The sculpture is still really warm. It maybe, I don't know, 120 ish. 150. It's, you know, it's warm. It's not enough to burn or anything, but it's it's warm. It's higher than body temperature. So what I want is I want the silicone mold to completely cool down before I pour in it again, and then get some mold release. Technically, silicone doesn't need mold release uh, if you're casting resin in it, but using mold release extends the life of the mold. Same thing with letting the mold cool down completely before I pour in it again. That uh, helps the life of the mold. Generally these types of molds you get um, 50, 60 castings maybe before the mold degrades and I do have a um, resin cast that I did. Let me grab it. I have my master gray resin cast which um, I haven't completely cleaned up yet it needs some sanding and a few tiny little uh, things touched up, but um, particularly around the bottom. But when I need to make another mold for Lady Vinsmith, this is the master that I will use because the original sculpture, which is actually up in this closet, let me grab it. <laughs> this sadly is the original Lady Vinsmith, and as you can see, um, when she came out of the mold, the uh, first time when she came with the mold, she had cracked a little bit around here. I patched it, made the second mold, and then she completely broke around the waist um, when I pulled her out of the second mold when I made it. Uh, so that's why I have the resin copy. And this is the one I will be using for any future molds. And it's really important that I have this. I make sure I have one of the... Um, uh, Embrace the Deep, the Tentacles of the Human Heart. Same deal, I have a resin set aside for that that's really, um, looks good. And it's for, uh, exactly for that reason, so I can make more molds. Lady Vinsmith is super sculpty firm. Actually, it's a 50-50 mix of super sculpty and super sculpty firm over a wire and wood armature. So it's really sturdy, but it can still get wrecked in a mold. Um, something made of oil-based clay, like Chavant or Monster Clay, which I've started using Monster Clay and I love it. It's fantastic stuff. We'll get completely wrecked in a mold. Um, 
unless you're super, super careful pulling it out. So I always want to make sure I have a resin master. And um, I tempted this one gray because it makes it so I can see any flaws easier for fixing. Um, and also just so I know that this is my resin master and I can't confuse it for one of the white resin ones. I'm probably going to have mostly worn out the white resin mold by the time I'm done the run for the Kickstarter. I have some conventions coming up. I've got Massive Comic Con in Worcester, Mass in June, uh, Steampunk Fair, a little one in Kennebunk, Maine in August, and then Boston Comic Con, which is huge and is in August, and I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to having Lady Vinsmiths there for people to buy. I'm looking forward to having her up in the shop, finally. Um, though I will say, it's one well, of the ones in the shop. Those are being cast to order, so there will be a little delay um, on, on getting the cast ones. And as soon as I'm done all the white resin ones, I'll be... Sh um, sending those, shipping them out. These will be going out a little bit after because they need the sanding and finishing and the patina and the spray. So here's one of the finished ones. I have a couple that are completely finished and uh, patinaed, aside from the one that's upstairs that is mine because I kept the very first bronze that I did. Um, and you can see she's nice and shiny. She's got lovely patina on her, which I'm not sure how well that's showing up in the camera. Um, and that, uh, probably two or three days on sanding and finishing, and, um, they take three days, roughly, for the patina to develop, and then a day to gloss and make sure it all dries, and those will be getting shipped out. And then I get to sit down and finally paint the hand-painted ones that are going up to the people on Kickstarter who, uh, ordered the hand painted and I'm really looking forward to that because I get to play with an airbrush and I don't get to airbrush nearly as much as I'd like to. It's a lot of fun. And I may do a video on that. So um, yeah, I think that's all on this what's probably after I edit it going to be a very long video. And uh, thank you for watching and I hope you like this little look as to uh, the process for these. So uh, thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you next video. Um, if you like this, you know, the whole deal on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, ask whatever questions you have. Um, uh, thank you. Bye-bye.